So I'm going to finish with uh, Psalm 22 about evidence for our faith and the prophetic um, scriptures in Psalm 22 about Jesus. And um, so we really need to get a strong grounding on our faith and why we believe it. And the fact that only God knows the future and can say things before they've happened as if they've already occurred uh, because he speaks of future events in the past tense uh, because they're, they're so certain to be. He's outside of time. And so um, we, we left right around verse 18. It's uh, about the crucifixion. Now, crucifixion was not even uh, an execution form during David's time. And the fact that he's mentioning piercing hands and feet and the exact words spoke to Jesus as they mocked him. And the fact that uh, verse 17 says, I may tell all my bones, that old English way of saying uh, you, he could number them all. His bones were not broken. Um, and they look and stare upon me. Because uh, we can see where the uh, Romans would, you know, bust the leg bones. God of those crucified so they couldn't lift themselves up to get air and they would die quicker of suffocation. Horrific. Um, but Jesus was already dead. And so they took a spear through his side. And I've seen uh, water and blood references all in the scripture as a picture of, of him, of his crucifixion in other places as well. So, that's where we were. So we're going to go to Psalm 22, verse 18. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Now, this is very important. One, it tells us that they literally take his clothes and tear them up. And each, like soldier, got a portion of fabric. Okay? Remember, they had to weave fabric. It was expensive. So it was valuable. And because remember in Samson, they, they wanted garments. Because you could sell them. Clothing was expensive. So, and cast lots upon my vesture. Now, this is a very specific prophecy. Not only because it tells you the exact way they gambled. The game itself. You know, could have said they just gambled for it. No, that's not all they said. They gambled for it. But the game of chance they played was called lot casting. It's kind of the same when you uh, have uh, sticks and you pick the shortest or longest straw. Right? It's a game of chance. So, cast lots upon my vesture. Jesus had a uh, garment, a robe, that had no seams. It was made out of one piece of fabric. So, it was woven, which would have been an expensive garment. And so rather than part the garments, tear them into three or four pieces among them, they gambled for this one garment. And so this verse foretells hundreds of years before it happened, the guards ripping his clothes and sharing them amongst themselves and then gambling and what game of chance they played to gamble for the vesture because they didn't want to tear it. Now, here, if you go to John chapter 19, let's look. Verses 23 and 24. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout so it was one piece it wasn't sewn together the whole thing was woven it had armholes and a head hole and that was it and it was all one piece they did not want to tear it because it was valuable they said therefore among themselves let us not rend it or tear it but cast lots for it what is the prophecy of psalm 22 and it's what Jesus says as he's dying on the cross. My God, my God, why has that forsaken me? That's what he uttered. They thought he was calling for Elijah. He 
was crying out. The first line of Psalm 22, which is foretelling his own crucifixion, makes my hair stand up. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Written hundreds of years before what happened. They tore the clothes into different pieces and and gave equal parts to each soldier. Then they cast lots for the vesture, for the coat that had no seams. So let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, obviously, the soldiers did not know they were fulfilling prophecy. But God is outside of time. He saw them do it before they did it. That's how he can call these things before they happen. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Dogs are unbelievers. They're outside the house. Save me from the lion's mouth. Again, we talked about symbolism. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Most of the time they believe that was a rhino. Uh, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Remember when Isaiah said, We esteemed him uh, smitten, stricken of God, afflicted. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. That is prophetic. The world thought that God had forsaken him. And it's hard to say because Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. But we know the Father and the Son. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. That's prophetic of all the nations. Gentiles too. Being fellow citizens with the saints, joint heirs with the commonwealth of Israel, with all the promises and covenants. Read Ephesians 2 on that. Okay. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and it's not with observation. You can't go, there's his kingdom. It's over there. We're not looking at earthly Jerusalem, but Jerusalem above, the mother of us all. A heavenly citizenship. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. Remember, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. So those that have died will be risen. We know that there's a resurrection of the dead. And none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. He is the seed of Abraham. A seed shall serve him. His own son. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. So all in Christ are the children of God. They shall come and declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. What happens? You have to be born of God. Declare his righteousness, the righteousness of God, unto a people that shall be born that he has done this. Is that not phenomenal? 
just phenomenal. I hope this strengthened your faith. Uh, we'll go into some more next week. I really, I think this is something we need to hang out on for a while. The prophecies, not just of Jesus, but shadows in the Old Testament. I love it. And I'll do some bigger videos for, like, everyone. But this is mostly for the guys that just come every morning and start your day with the daily devotional. Sometimes I'll talk about personal stories and uh, how the Word of God is manifested in my life and so forth. And other times I'll give you things to strengthen your faith or give you a reminder of your blessed assurance and encourage and edify. But I try to do as I'm led. And uh, thank you for letting me do that for you guys. Uh, you bless me uh, so much as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And for that, I thank you. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.